We are going over a CTF. Ignore that this is a new location. I moved and I don't really know what to do with the background. So any suggestions would be appreciated. I don't know. And if you don't know what capture the flags are, they're kind of like hacking competitions. Ethically, of course, within a virtual environment and everything is kind of set up to be hacked, quote unquote, ethically. YouTube, don't take the video down. It's for educational purposes. So let's get into the CTF. So this is one CTF platform. This one is called Meta CTF. Not sponsored, but I wish it was. And you have all of these problems that weigh different points. And it's kind of a competition, so you're kind of trying to get the most points, capture the most flags, and be the number one team, and win. So, we're just going to go over some that I have solved. This one is JS Gatekeeper. Can you help me with a pen test? I've been asked to try and steal a flag from this service. Click it, goes to the service. Now, normally in CTFs, you see a login page. Normally what I do first is right click and then just to see what is going on with the code see if anything is sus as the kids say or is sticking out console you have sources which the url the images the index then you have the network you can reload the page see all the assets load on there you normally click on the base url um, I normally click on the base URL and then you can see the requests and responses, things like that. But didn't see anything of suspicion there. So right click and now we are on view page source. Scrolling down, you see here password, password, which if you're doing it manually, you can see if this is a uh, SQL injectable. But if we scroll all the way to the bottom, a little JSON here, window location slash dashboard, else alert invalid username or password. So I'm seeing slash dashboard. So go back to the homepage of the site, go up to the URL. Then we inputted slash dashboard in the URL at the end of it. And we have the flag right here. Next one is server sleuthing you've been tasked with the testing of the security of this electricity substation management portal can you figure out what programming language and version are used to run the app yes we can so click into it here it is high tech right here enter username enter password login remember me the usual so this time we are right clicking and then going into inspect we go into network reload page the base URL, you can see the request, the response, things of that nature, 200 get request, which means the page was loaded successfully. And if you see down here, server, here's the flag, I am running Python flask. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Next one is no way Jose. My friend Jose made a quick and dirty web app from his new startup. Check out the source code here and the website here, username demo, password demo to log in. So, this is the website. So let's copy the URL and let's open it in the Linux distribution of your choice. Right now I'm using Kali. So here it is pulled up. And for this, we are gonna be utilizing Burp Suite. And if you don't know what Burp Suite is, it is a web app pen testing tool. That's just how I'm explaining it. I don't know the official definition of Burp Suite, but that's just what it is, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, Burp Suite. Proxy, intercept, off, we switch it on. But first, we need to set up the proxy in Firefox. If it's not already on from last time I used this. Settings, manual proxy configuration right here. To set this up yourself, if you don't want to use Foxy Proxy, you are going to go into settings, scroll all the way down to network, manual proxy configuration. HTTP proxy is going to be 127.0.0.1, localhost. And port, which is behind my head, is going to be 8080. And you click this, always use this proxy for HTTPS. 
So then we click OK and the proxy is set up. So go back in the burp, intercept on, reload the page, and then boom, we have the get request. Then forwarded, then it goes through the proxy back to the website. So username, let's go with test, password, test, login. And as you can see, we have this request, user test, password, test. But as I just remembered, it's demo, not test. So let's forward that. Invalid login. So username is going to be demo, password is going to be demo. Login, post, request, forward. And as you can see here, we have a cookie token, JWT token. So right click, send to repeater, open up repeater. And here we have the token. So what do we do with the token? Well, we go to jwt.io. You can encode and decode JWT tokens. So delete that. And then we paste in the one from the request. And as you can see, we have payload data demo right here. Payload user demo. So we have a JWT. We see the schema. Um, now we're viewing the source code that the CTF gave us, app.py. So as you can see here, secret key redacted, admin password redacted, flag redacted. If username equals demo and password equals demo, pass. Else username equals admin and password equals admin password, pass. Else return invalid login. So we have two users, demo and admin and whatever the admin password is. And here we have JWT encode user, username, secret key, correct, slash, dashboard. So the vulnerable piece of code is this one right here. Claims equal json.loads.base64 decode token split. So this line manually decodes the JWT token without verifying its signature. So you could craft a new token, use it in the session, send it, and then log in with the token. Welcome demo user and the real app you'd see your confidential system info here. If user equals admin status, welcome admin, most recent system information plus the flag. User demo, you could change that to user admin. So in good fashion, I asked ChatGPT to create this fake JWT token. So ChatGPT created the payload, user admin, base64 URL encoded it, no padding, there that is and then create a fake JWT using a dummy header and signature. Header, right there, payload, signature, whatever. And then the token equals header dot payload dot signature. So we are back, Firefox. We right click, inspect page, go to storage, and you can see here is the original token. So we double click, backspace, paste the forge token, Press enter, then refresh the page. And then make sure you turn off your proxy, refresh the page, and system dashboard, you are logged in as user admin. System status, welcome admin. And we have the flag. As you can see, this is the forge token. You can see down here, blah, 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 dot whatever. Next one is open book. I just published an API using fast API. Check it out here. I'm sure you won't be able to find where I've hit the flag. And here it is, message open book API v1. So for this API, if you can research fast API, they have something called Swagger UI. I'm not too versed on API exploitation, which I should be more versed on it. But if you go to slash docs, you have it right here, fast API. Then you have git index, git API version, and then git API v1 secret flag endpoint. And then there's a button right here, try it out. We click execute, and then we are curling the directory and you get the response, which is the flag. So fast API automatically documents all routes by default, unless you disable it. So that is how you're able to get to slash docs and then the flag. So that is all for today. Lots of web pen testing problems I've gotten a little bit more interested in web pen testing. So I am thoroughly enjoying it. Wanna get more into web pen testing CTF. So if you guys know of any, 
put them in the comments below. Make sure to like, subscribe, punch all the buttons in the face, and I will see you in the next video.